Hello there fellow Amigans and welcome to my channel. In this video I will be installing this nifty little configurable 9.5MB fast and slow RAM expansion for my Amiga 600. It is plug and play and piggybacks off the top of the A600's Motorola 68000 CPU using an inverted PLCC socket. For those of you who are unfamiliar with a PLCC socket, it stands for plastic leaded chip carrier which are a type of chip carrier used to form connections between integrated circuits and printed circuit boards. PLCC sockets typically have a rectangular plastic housing with connections along all four edges of the rectangle. Let's crack open the Amiga then and get on with installing this RAM expansion board, and while I do so, I will provide some more information about it. The location of the RAM expansion board covers one corner of the internal metal hard drive caddy, so therefore I will have to remove it. This RAM expansion board is only suitable for use with internal ID cable type compact flash card adapters, which I'm already using so that's a bonus. This RAM expansion board can be used in conjunction with the trapdoor chip RAM expansion to bring the A600 up to a total of 11.5 megabytes, 1 megabyte onboard chip memory, 1 megabyte expansion chip memory, and 8 meg fast RAM, 1.5 meg slow RAM which is provided by this new RAM expansion board. Now that we're inside, I can throw this away as I won't be needing it anymore, and I'll give the Motorola 68000 a good clean with an isopropyl wipe to remove any oxidisation or contaminants. This will provide a better connection for the expansion, and while I'm in here, I'll give the other chips a little wipe. After a couple of minutes allowing for it all to dry, I can now install the expansion board by aligning the socket over the top of the CPU and pressing it firmly into place. Now that the internal metal hard drive caddy has been removed, I don't really have anywhere for the IDE compact flash adapter to sit, so just for a bit of reassurance, I'm going to stick this old Tesco club card to the bottom of the IDE compact flash adapter, just so that it does not short anything out. After a little visual inspection to ensure that the expansion is seated correctly, I can now put this all back together, switch on the Amiga and check that the extra memory is being detected in Workbench. Now. 
beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I've now got 2 megabytes of graphics memory and 9.7 megabytes of other memory, so that RAM expansion board is certainly working as it should be. That is a total of 11.77 megabytes of memory. Mmm, tasteful. Something we could only have dreamed of back in the 90s, and it does amaze me that some of these little devices that are being created to revive old machines like the Amiga, and they are reasonably priced. This RAM expansion was only £14 more than the original AMRAM 6001 1MB trapdoor RAM expansion card I picked up off eBay. £38 for 9.5 meg is a steal as far as I'm concerned. Now let's get on to sampling some games, as that is the whole point in this RAM expansion board in the first place, as I couldn't play the settlers as WHD load required all of this to be loaded into memory. Well, that's a little bit disappointing. So I guess it's back to the drawing board, or WinUAE, to install the settlers from the ADF files, as the settlers does have a HD install option. In the meantime, I'd been doing some reading about the kick 34005a 500 file. Some installs use a so-called kick emu to have complete Amiga OS environment for the installed program. For that, kick emu requires an original kickstart image. This image can be extracted from a real Amiga with tools like GrabKick or similar which can be found on Amunet. The supported image version depends on the installed program. If the image cannot be found by WHD load or the image is of the wrong version or altered in any way, WHD load will quit with an appropriate error message. Additionally, a relocation file with the extension .rtb matching the kickstart image must be present. This relocation file can be found on Amunet in the archive util slash boot slash skick 346lha both files, the kickstart image and the relocation file must be located in the directory devs colon kickstart forward slash and must have the correct name. Starting WHD load version 17.0, the files can also be located in the directory WHD common colon. This will be something I look into as not all games have an installer on the original ADF files. Now the Atlas has been installed from the ADF files, Let's just check that it works under WinUAE, because if the game runs on here, then the likelihood is it will work on the Amiga. Excellent. All looks absolutely splendid. Time to give it a test on the old Amiga, and if it works, I know what I'm going to be doing all weekend. It'll be like good old times, where we used to huddle around the Amiga on a weekend and play Settlers. Fingers crossed. Oh yeah. I absolutely love it. It works. Thank you. 
Thank you so much for watching. If you like my videos, please give me a thumbs up and leave me some comments below. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Take care Amigans.